Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Delco Show. This is Tori Fiore, Executive Director of Delaware County's Brandywine Conference and Visitors Bureau, and you are listening to the Delco Show right here on iRadio Philly. The Delco Show is brought to you by the Delaware County Chamber of Commerce. Each week we talk to a member of the Chamber of Commerce, find out a little bit about their business, a lot about the people that go go behind the business, and uh, and we try to have some fun doing it. Uh, get ready for this is not going to be as much fun this program, folks. We got a a very interesting topic to talk about, and and basically it it comes down to um, uh, child sexual abuse. Um, I'd like to introduce to you, ladies and gentlemen, listening on iRadio Philly, uh, Michael Rank, who is the president and CEO of the Association Office of the Community YMCA of Eastern Delaware County on Garrett Road in Lansdowne. And um, uh, they have a, um, a program going on, and it's called Stewards of Children, uh, Darkness to Light, Stewards of Children, 22,000. Now, we'll, talk, we'll, we'll explain what the 22,000 is uh, as we go through the program, uh, but uh, it's basically five steps in regards to, and, and Michael enlighten me a little bit because I'm somewhat ignorant of this, unfortunately, uh, of the fact of of, uh, of sexual abuse. So, uh, but I'd like to I'd like to introduce to you, ladies and gentlemen, Mike Stack, Mike uh, Michael Rank. Welcome to the Delco Show. Thanks, Tori. It's a, my pleasure to be here. Yeah, this is this is going to be one of those conversations, Mike. That uh, 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 no matter how you look at it. It's not a good one, it, it, but it needs to be. It needs to be said, uh, and it's it's a very important. Uh, um, but it's the the YMCA. How did the YMCA get involved in in some? Well, let me back up. I'm sorry. Let me back up a second. What is the Darkness to Light Stewards of Children Twenty Two Thousand? What is that? Uh, R Y the Community Y is partnered with Darkness to Light, which is a natural uh, national foundation whose mission is to prevent and educate people on child sexual abuse. Uh, okay. We've gotten involved in this because we looked at our statistics, and the Y being a youth-serving organization, 50% of the people who walk through our doors every year, and we have 30,000 people walk through our doors every year, so 15,000 of those people walking through our doors are children under the age of 18. The statistics show us that uh, about one in six boys and one in four girls will somehow be sexually abused before they're 18 years old. So when our board looked at this, we said, how can we not get involved? Our ultimate mission is to strengthen the foundation of our community. Our community is the children we serve and the families we serve. And we looked at it and said, we have to get involved in this. We have to look to help these children. Historically, our Y's been in the community since 1947, and I can't tell you the number of people that I run into and said, oh, yeah, I learned to swim at your Y, or I went to summer camp at your Y when I was a child, or I did youth sports. And when we continually hear that, we said, we have a big impact on our community, Mm -hmm. and we need to help our community grow and get stronger. Uh, We've always putting the safety of children first in every program that we do. Uh, And we've always looked to protect children and families in everything that we do. So this was a natural extension. And we became uh, one Y in this area that's doing it. Uh, And it is a very, very difficult subject, as you said, to talk about and discuss. But it's one that needs to happen here in Delaware County. Yeah. And uh, so this was a program, this Darkness to Light, Stewards of Children, um, was a program already in place, and you, you the why under your, you know, auspice have 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 taken it upon yourselves to do this program, this five step program. Yeah, Na- nationally, again, Darkness to Light is a program that uh, the national why has been working with for a few years, and we looked at it and said we need to get involved in this. How do we do this? Uh, it's run through the Redwoods Foundation, which happens to be our insurance company, our general liability carrier, Uh, and we spoke to them. Uh, We applied for a grant because it does cost some money to get people trained and how to to do the trainings in this. Uh, And just recently we heard we're one of the top 40 Ys in the country 
in training people. In the past uh, two and a half years, we've trained over 800 people in this training. Uh, and our goal, the 22,000, comes from our two-year goal over the next two years is to train 22,000 more people in this type of uh, child abuse prevention training. Mm -hmm. I want to get back. I want to get back to this very shortly because this is the the whole premise of of having you on today, Mike. But uh, you've been around the Y organization for a number of years, haven't you? I have. Uh, I've been with the Y nationally for thirty years. I've been here in Delaware County since two thousand, so I'm going on my fifteenth year yeah. in Delaware County. My wife grew up in St. Dennis Parish. Well, that makes so no, we're okay, Delco well, people. Well, we were going to get to that. You okay. know, you were you were from D.C. Yep. Which. Okay, you're not from <laughs> South. You're not from South Jersey, so that's a plus. Um, uh, but being from Washington D.C. doesn't make you a bad person by any stretch of the imagination. But th- your wife's a Delco gal, absolutely. So you know, bless you, you're in. Okay, <laughs> you're, thank uh, you. You're a de facto Delco <laughs> guy. Okay, uh, but you look like a Delco guy. You got your sleeves rolled up and everything, and you know you, you're comfortable. So. Um, You've been here for 15 years. You've seen a lot of things change. And I guess one of the things that you've seen change is the Internet, the technology, the social medias and everything like that. And, you know, I can go back. And, we, and, and, and ladies and gentlemen, we were talking about this earlier. We do a little, you know, pre-production work. We were talking about this earlier. You know, I know when I was a kid, and I think you're somewhat younger than me, Mike. Um, uh, uh, you went out in the morning, you came back at night. That's how I grew up. Mom said goodbye at eight o'clock and said be home for dinner at five. If you were hungry, you went home and got lunch. Yep. You got a peanut butter sandwich. You went back out again. People knew where you were by wherever all the bikes were. You went down to the to the sand lot or to the corner lot or to the behind the behind the, the supermarket and played baseball or went to a local empty field, who knows where the heck it was, and played rough touch football or tackle football without equipment on. You know, you didn't really care uh, about any of this stuff. I know that, uh, you know, I know you've got, you know, some children that are uh, 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 one that's in their 20s. You know, I've got one uh, that's 40, 30, 39. I forget now, maybe 40. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I remember when I was coaching and umpiring and running the football organization and refereeing and basketball and everything, you just volunteered. They said, welcome aboard. We need all the help we can get. And you did it. Because you had your kids involved in it, uh, or your wife said to you, you're doing this, and you go, yes, dear, I'm yeah. doing this, okay? <laughs> and I would love to do this. And and you took a, an interest, and you enjoyed it. And those are just the main reasons that you did it. And some people have stayed with organizations even after their kids have grown out of it because there was a community about it. There were friendships that were that were bonded and born from it and everything. You can't do that anymore, can you? No, no, it, it's, it's definitely a different world. Uh, as we were talking before we, we started today, uh, I have three kids, 24, 21, and 12. And I remember being that 12-year-old boy and mom saying, see you at five for dinner. I would never think to do that with my son today. Uh, we, we need to know where we're connected. Uh, and technology, I think, is a good and a bad thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I, I'm sure like many parents, I can track where my son is based on where his cell phone is. Uh, and he can call us anytime and reach us for rides anytime. Uh, the bad part about that is it gives easy access to children in many different ways. Yeah. And for potential predators, it gives them easy access to children. And I think, you know, we all could agree if we open the paper every day, there's another incident of a child being uh, mistreated, I'll say at this point, by an adult. Uh, And the connections generally come from very familiar people. It's not the stranger danger that you and I grew up with. It's coach, friend, teacher. uh, Relative. Relative. Yep. Uh, 
and it's different now. And, yeah. and that it, it's a scary world. And I think I think as adults here in Delaware County, we have a responsibility to try to change that so our kids can grow up feeling safe and our kids can grow up knowing that not all adults are bad people. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, and I think I go back and I had a, I had a Catholic education. I mean, you know, Father McTay, Father Finnerty. You know, who does, nobody, nobody gave it, nobody, that never existed. Right. It never, ever existed. And now, Every time you turn around, you're, as you said, it's, it's something's in the paper. Well, you know, and, and I think that's the sign of our times. I, I think it probably did exist back when we were growing up, but we weren't as connected to yeah. social media and we weren't as connected to the news. I, I grew up with the Walter Cron Cronkite era, and you didn't have your local news. Yeah, you, you had maybe five minutes of local news and the rest was national news. And now everything... I don't even watch the news anymore because as soon as you turn it on, it's something negative. Yeah. We, we, we try not to do that. And I think it's just scary. You know, yeah. it's scary. And I think we need to get back to talking about the positive things. And if, it's, and if it's scary for the adults, the parents. Think about the kids. My gosh. You know, yeah. yeah. It's just even more terrifying for them. Yeah. Not knowing that they can walk through their own neighborhood and be safe. Yeah. And, and, and you know you can always remember, and, and again we're, we're we're maybe being somewhat pushing pushing the envelope, talking about the past here, but you know you always knew that your neighbors were just like your parents. Uh, what 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 was oh. the, what was the phrase? It, it takes a village to raise a child. Yeah, and it really in my time that's what it was. I got oh, yeah. more trouble because my neighbors saw me doing something than when my parents did. Oh yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. And our and our and our son, my wife's family, all stayed around here, and we would get. The, and he was a good kid, but we'd get things back, and I'd ask him, "Well, what were you doing? Um, you know, over at a? Uh, how'd you know that?" I said. I have eyes yeah. everywhere, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I know people. Yeah, and he realized he can't get away with anything. Yeah, he just could. He just couldn't get. It. But that's the way it was then. Now everybody's so insular, ins isolated. They're scared to say anything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. they're afraid. Well, yeah, they're afraid. You hear the things about in the supermarket. Oh, you know yeah. the kid. The, the kid with the with da 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 da, and I and I lambasted the mother, and I got yelled at, and you know I got a lawsuit against me now. Mm -hmm. Hello. Yeah, yeah, it's scary. <laughs> you know? It's not the same world. No, no, it's a di it's a different thing, and we're and you know and and we're going to talk and we're going to talk about that, and I I definitely want to get into this. Um, Darkness to light, stewards of children, because there's the five, you know, there's the, there's the five steps mm -hmm. about that, uh, which we're going, which we're going to get into. We're getting close to a, um, a, a a break here in a minute or so. So I just, ladies and gentlemen, we're speaking with uh, Michael Rank, who's the president and CEO at the Association Office of the Community YMCA of Eastern Delaware County on Garrett Road uh, in Lansdowne, PA, and they have a program that they're training people for called Darkness to Light Stewards of Children. Uh, you can check more information out on the website, cyedc.org slash two, I'm sorry, slash D2L. The D2L stands for Darkness to Light. cyedc.org uh, front slash D2L. And as soon as we get back, we're going to talk more about this and get specifically into, uh, you know, this, the darkness to light stewards of children. It's a very interesting uh, 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 training program, which, um, uh, you know, it's almost like everybody should, should get involved in this and as part of the community and everything. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you're listening to iRadio Philly. This is the Delco Show. The Delco Show is brought to you by uh, the Delaware County Chamber of Commerce, We'd like to thank Primo Hoagies for bringing their hoagies today. Uh, always a good good uh, uh, hoagie coming from Primo's on 132 East Baltimore Avenue in Media, Delaware County, PA. Uh, check them out at primohoagies.com. It's a wonderful thing. This is Tori Fiore. You're listening to The Delco Show. Welcome back to The Delco Show. You're listening to The Delco Show on iRadio Philly. 
Uh, the Delco Show is brought to you by the Delaware County Chamber of Commerce. Um, we're speaking with Michael Rank, who's the president and CEO, uh, the associate office of the Community Y of Eastern Delaware County on Garrett Road in Lansdowne, PA. They have a, a wonderful training program on um, on the website cyedc.org front slash D2L, which is Darkness to Light's Stewards of Children. Um, it's about sexual abuse, ladies and gentlemen. We've been talking to Mike about it and the, uh, uh, the prominence of it around, and, and the numbers are just staggering. Uh, but the goal um, for the Stewards of Children through the Y uh, they're, they're calling the program 22,000 because they're the, that's the amount of number of people, if I'm not mistaken, Mike, that you want to train under this program. That's right. We, we want to train one in five adults in our service area, and that equates to approximately 22,000 adults mm-hmm. that we want to train in the next two years. Yeah. And, uh, folks, it's just a training program to make you more knowledgeable, to educate you uh, about uh, what to look for what to learn, how to go about it, uh, how to deal with it. Um, it doesn't cost any money. You're not volunteering time. It's going to take you a grand total of two hours um, to learn about this. And, and it's a, it, it seems like it's a, a well-worth uh, project and a program to, to be trained on and to understand this a little better. So, Mike, I, Mike, I want to get right to this now. You know, darkness to light, stewards of children. There's five basic steps or or facts, or the five basic steps, if you will, and and in, you know, in, and in their order. I mean, you know, it's it's learn the facts, minimize opportunity, talk about it, recognize the signs, and react responsibly. I mean, can we? You know, we've got 15 minutes left here. Uh, and what I like to do is to go through each one of these very quickly and just kind of highlight them for me. But, uh, uh, you know, you're learning the facts. I mean, the things that we already know, you know, one in ten children, you know, are sexually abused. Um, well, Tori, uh, here, here's one fact that one in ten nationally. Uh, I, I heard recently that uh, if everyone knows the Wells Fargo Center, I was told recently by an official in Delaware County that we could fill the Wells Fargo Center 25,000 w- with children who've been sexually abused in Delaware County alone. Wow. And if you do and again I don't have a calculator and I'm not and I was never good in mar- at math there's 550,000 people who live in Delaware County you're saying 25,000 you figure out that percentage. That it's <laughs> it, you know, we've gone by one on ten and followed that, and that was scary enough. But when you when you visually picture the Wells Fargo Center yeah. and they just finished frozen on ice, filled with children, that's scary. Yeah, no, you're no, you're abs- you're absolutely right. So, uh, I, you know, learn the facts. Learn the facts. It's not stranger danger anymore. Learn the facts. Learn what goes on. Uh, be knowledgeable. Don't be scared of the subject. Mm-hmm. Talk about it. And I, I know that's one of the steps in it, but that's probably the most important. Let's get this darkness of child sexual abuse out into the light so everyone is talking about it and everyone can be a good steward of their child. Well, I think hey, I want to go back to what you said in the first segment. When we, when we were talking about it when we were growing up, you never had to worry about that sort of stuff, da 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 But you had made a very uh, good point. Nobody ever talked about it. It was swept under the rug. It was hidden. You know, I mean, I can, you know, after you said that, I can remember as I got older, and I guess when, you know, we'd meet the guys that we played ball with in in, in grade school, the eighth grade team and everything like that. And, you know, you would would now all of a sudden hear a story about one of the the coaches. And, And when you actually would think back in your mind, you would say, Oh yeah, I did think that was a little odd, you know. And, and, and yeah. I had those in my high school and and in my middle school and my elementary school. And you think back and you say, "Wow." Yeah, and and when I was in college, um, the first time around, I had a short stint in college, and I went to work for a living. And I went back to college at thirty, but you know, um, 
again, you know, you're, I was 17. I was mm-hmm. a, a year ahead of everything. Right. And I was in theater. And the theater director asked us out. He said, come on over for dinner. And, you know, the producer of the, you know, that right. did the shows and everything. Me and my buddy went over. And it took about four years later, I went, son of a bitch. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. And you go, huh. Yeah. I, I had a tennis coach in high school. Same thing. We were all the people on the team were good friends, and he would say, "Come on over to my house on the weekend. We'll have we'll have a good time." I never went, but I know other people who did. Yeah, and it's just it's so pervasive, and it's one of those things, as you said, no one likes to talk about it. It's a difficult subject. Yeah, but yeah. like anything, if anything good is going to come out of it, we need to talk about it. Oh no, you're no, you're absolutely correct. You know, and and again, I'm I'm looking here. I'm, I, I, you know, I'm not that smart to know all this stuff and have it in my head like Mike does. But uh, you know, another rampant thing with the, is the child pornography. Mm. My God, mm. you know, it just yeah, it, it's uh, my mind can't grasp that. Uh, I don't I don't understand it. Uh, I, I got nothing. I got, I got look, nothing. I got nothing. I, I, I got nothing on pornography to begin with, and then you go child pornography, and yeah. you go. Ah, uh, I I I don't understand it. You know, it it just it just amazes me, and and you know, I I, I was looking at something on um, um again here we go back to social media on on MSN. Um, I guess yesterday evening I was checking some whatever the heck I was checking out and everything like that. And talking, and and it talked about these different uh, major businesses that were selling items that they actually pulled off because they realized, oh, we made a big mistake. Uh, you know, like uh, um, sexy policewoman's outfits mm-hmm. for little girls for Halloween. Yeah. What are you thinking? Yeah. What the hell are you thinking? They're. Unfortunately, people think about what sells. Yeah, exactly. And, and exactly. Not, not, not what message we're sending to our kids. Yeah, I, you know, it's just, well, I, again, I, you know, hell, my dad made our costumes. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> we, we were poor. Uh, I, I had one of those pig pen sheets where you cut too many holes in the eyes, and yeah. that, that was your Halloween costume. Yeah, well, mm-hmm. then you became a, yeah, well, you, 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 you became the opposite of a cyclist. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and and it's interesting that that it's such talk about embarrassment. Most kids don't even report it, do they? No, no. Most kids are too ashamed, or they're told that their family, or they may be threatened in some way, uh, or that this is just a normal thing that people do. Yeah. Uh, and that's the sad part. You know, kids don't know any better. Yeah. Uh, and, and they're embarrassed when yeah. they know it's wrong. They're embarrassed by it. Yeah. Well. Yeah, and and you know you, you look at that and you go, yeah, you're coming out. Well, ten years later, whatever the case may, you know, because maybe it finally dawned on them, or the realization came about, or they felt they were no longer threatened by that person. I mean, who not only knows what the you know what the thing was, but you know, a, a step two on this is uh, in the and, and this is part of the training program, yes. isn't it? Yes, it you is. Yeah. Uh, minimize opportunity. Minimize opportunity. And, and that's where we need every adult's help in this. That's where we need the 22,000. Because the more eyes we have out there, the more eyes we have out there. And minimize the opportunity means to make sure. And, and I'm going to relate it to what we do at the Y. An adult is never alone with a child at the Y. In any of our programs, there's always at least two adults. In any of our programs, we encourage parents to be there when we're interacting with their child. We would encourage parents when they're putting their child into other places to make sure those are the same standards. Um, Make sure that you're never alone. As an adult, uh, in our camp staff training that we do at the Y, I I do a little piece with all the staff, and I go in and I say to the guys who are our camp counselors, guys, all it takes is one child to say, (coughs) he touched me, and your career is over. Yeah. Whether you did it or not, your career is over. Yeah. So minimize those risks and protect yourself. But we have to be careful with that as well because we get into this society of kids need a hug every now and then, and that's okay. But we want to make sure it's the right type of hug witnessed by other people and not 
something else. Right. So we talk about minimizing the risk and making sure that you're looking for opportunities uh, that may happen when your child's not in your care, making sure they understand. And the third point that you'll bring up in a minute is talk. Talk mm -hmm. to your child. Yeah, well, I want to get I want to get back to minimizing the opportunity. You said, you know, you want the eyes out there, the eyes out there. I got a funny story about Chuck E. Cheese, and being an adult that goes, there's nothing funny about Chuck no, E. Cheese. No, there is not. Uh, <laughs> but it was my uh, youngest grandson, Griffin's, oh, I got to say, it had to be his seventh birthday. And we went to Chuck E. Cheese on a Sunday. And... The oldest one, Gavin, was a little, little bit past eight years old, okay? And there had to be three parties going on. And I'm, you know, I'm just sitting there. I'm trying to mind my own business. I'm doing my New York Times crossword puzzle in a booth and everything. And I got a cup of coffee there and, every, you know, whatnot. And here comes Griffin over, who's scared to death of those damn mechanical <laughs> things, whatever they are, those musicians, okay? So he comes and he sits across from me at the, at the booth and whatnot. And we're talking, and he's going, no, no, that's Italian for, for grandfather. I don't like them. I don't want to go near them. I don't want to see. I said, well, Griffin, you can hang out here and everything. Now, all of a sudden, a young lady comes over who is part of our group. And she comes up to me. She goes, excuse me, sir, who are you? Now, I automatically know, you know. And I go, Griffin, tell this lady who I am. That's Nonio. I said, yeah, that, okay, <laughs> fine, but... That's the point. That's the point. That's the point. That's, that's the point. exactly it. Make sure, and that person who came over to just check who you were... I was not upset. ...was doing the right thing. Yeah, believe me, and that was seven years ago, and I was not upset about that. I, I almost thanked her, yeah. you know, because now all of a sudden she felt bad, and I should have said to her, don't feel bad. No. No. Absolutely I, not. Believe me, I'd appreciate it. Absolutely I, I appreciate not. it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when you say talk, step three, talk about it. Talk about Who it. Who are you talking to? You're talking to anyone you can talk to. Talk to your child about these situations. Talk to other adults that you know. Tell them you went through this training and they should go through it. Talk to your local elected officials, your school board members, your teachers, your religious institutions. Talk to the hospitals and the doctors where you take your child because, again, the more eyes that are out there and the more we're talking about this, the scarier it becomes for the predators. Mm -hmm. And that's what we want. We want to make sure that people know this problem is there and we're addressing it and we're not going to tolerate it anymore. Yeah. Mike, we only have a, a couple minutes left here. I want to, I got to get through to these. Uh, recognize the signs. Yep. Recognize Bullets. the signs. Give me some, some. Child withdraws, becomes sullen, becomes argumentative. Uh, an adult changes their sleep patterns, uh, just normal things that are out of the ordinary. Fear, falling Fear, grades, all that sort of stuff and everything. You know, shuddering, I don't want to be near that person, or, Yeah, you know, those yeah. type of things. Uh, last step, step number five, react responsibly. React, res report. We say at the Y, and as CEO, I tell our staff, I will never tell you you were wrong for reporting something you thought shouldn't be happening. Mm -hmm. call the authorities, let them deal with it. Hey, look, if someone gets angry, if you, if you would have been reported in Chuck E. Cheese to the police and the police would have come, I think you would have been thankful that someone was checking on your grandchild. Sure. No, ab absolutely. So and, report. And, yeah, and let me close it with that. If someone thought they saw something in the Jerry Sandusky case, we still wouldn't be sitting here today with that debacle, would we, Mike? Absolutely not. You know. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this has been a, a eye-opening uh, uh, half hour with uh, uh, Michael Rank, who's the president and CEO, Association Office uh, of the uh, YMCA of Eastern Delaware County, Garrett Road, Lansdowne. They have a program, a training, training program, uh, Darkness to Light, Stewards of Children, 22,000. It's a training program. doesn't cost a dime. takes two hours of your time. It's about sexual, child sexual abuse. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I would urge you to look at this website, get that program online. It takes a couple of hours. Uh, check it out. Mike, 
Thank you very much for Thank being you, with us. This has been an education to me, and I hope it's been an education to our audience. I appreciate the time. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Tori Fiore. You're listening to The Delco Show on iRadio Philly. Thank you for listening, and uh, we'll...